saved at the time. Used to make me think. Eternity. Mr. Herb Harris, a well-known gospel preacher at an earlier day here in the Maritime Provinces, well, particularly uh, it would have been in Newfoundland and Labrador where uh, Mr. Harris labored a lot. And he was knocking on doors and passing, he passed a tract to a man that he said as he passed the tract to him, just a reminder of eternity. The man said, excuse me, sir, that's what I'm trying to forget. Lots of people like that. Just put it out of their mind. Just don't want to think about it. Just, you know, wouldn't spend 30 minutes listening without it costing them a dime, without lifting a finger, without doing anything. You have to give to nothing. You have to join nothing. The great question, my friend, let it sink in. You could get it settled tonight. Do you realize that you could join this meeting tonight, which we certainly appreciate that you have done? Join this meeting tonight on the way to hell. And before the meeting concludes, or I pray, and in the meeting, you'll be on your way to heaven. No fears of death. No fears of eternity. Now, it isn't, don't, don't get us wrong. It isn't that Christians uh, gladly entertain the fact of death. They don't. They don't. But death, my friend, if you like, is just the doorway that opens on an eternal brink to the vastness of eternity. And out into that eternity, our souls, that again will be in one of two places, either with the one that inhabiteth the eternity or in the same prophecy, the everlasting burnings. The purpose, my friend, is that you would be saved and know your sins forgiven. Just remember it this way, okay? Can't, you can't measure eternity in lengths. But something that might help you to remember. Eternity is too long to get it wrong. And if you're trusting on anything or in anyone else tonight other than a Savior that died on Calvary's cross, shed his blood, gave his life, you're wrong. You're wrong. Please don't go away and say, well, that preacher says I'm wrong. The Bible says you're wrong. There's only one way to heaven, and that is through the Lord Jesus who said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto me, unto me but by him that has sent him. So tonight, that's the truth of it. Uh, see, we speak of eternal judgment. That is because your sin has been committed against an eternal being. And the reason that we have eternal judgment is God takes that judgment and he stretches it out forever in an eternity. What happened at Calvary's cross is that God took that judgment that should have been mine for all eternity and he contracted it and he poured it out upon his son. And the Lord Jesus bore the punishment that was due me on Calvary so I could be saved and for all eternity. I am so glad tonight, Fred, to know my sins forgiven, know Christ is my Savior, and to know heaven is my home. You would agree that five minutes has a relative bearing to a million years. Can you comprehend a million years? No, you can't. million years, five minutes, has a relative bearing to a million years. But a million years has no relative bearing to eternity because eternity is forever, forever. So that's why we often sing that gospel hymn, life at best is very brief, like the falling of a leaf, like the binding of a sheep, be in time. So eternity escapes our power of reason. There's been never a preacher that really could comprehend it. It's interesting that God in his word doesn't go to great descriptions or a definition of it. This is all that we read about it for this reason. Our minds aren't big enough to take in the vastness, the scope of the great forever. And I think there are souls out there, and they will be there forever. There's a man in the Old Testament. His name is Cain. The Bible says, Warn to them that have gone in the way of Cain. And Cain was just like you. He's taken his own way. You know what he said? My punishment is greater than I can bear. But he's bearing it. Doesn't argue about it. He's bearing it. I have to tell you tonight. He's only bore 2,000 years of his punishment. Which is insignificant to eternity. To forever. Think of all those years that he's still bearing a punishment that he said was too great. So, 
Isaiah says he inhabits the eternity. We live in the 20th century, and someday a gravestone may mark the date and of the death for most of us and so on. But so, so what if it doesn't? So what if it doesn't? What's it matter? I drive by cemeteries just like you do. And the truth is this. All that is left is that the ashes and the remains of a little house temporarily that they inhabited. And they're gone. And the great question is, where? You know, there's a lot of things in life that you can get a second chance at. If you fail a grade in school, I mean, you can repeat it next year. Fail a driver's license down here at the SNB, eh, right in a couple of weeks. A lot of things that you can fail at, and you can get a second go at it, but not this. Not this, Fred. It must be horrid. That moment when a soul finds themselves launched into eternity. No savior. When they could have been saved. When they could have known their sins were given. When they could have known Christ as their savior. Eternity. However, there is no concept more awesome. There isn't. Our minds simply cannot grasp the idea of endless existence. And that's what eternity means, endless existence. We, we, just, we just can't take it in. Now, the devil doesn't care what has grabbed our attention as long as it holds it in the wrong direction. And you can go through your Bible and you'll find out people, and that was just exactly what had happened to them. And they lost total, misplaced the thought of eternity. Never entered their head. I speak to people about being saved and being born again, and I, I'm likely relating more to this life than the great beyond. You know, uh, so you'd understand it. Please don't feel sorry for me like some people do as a Christian. I live a very happy life. I wouldn't want any other kind of a life. And if God's salvation was only for this life, I'm still quite happy. Think of it this way. If what I'm preaching you from the Word of God, suppose there's nothing to it. It's pie in the sky. Okay? There's nothing to it. So when it comes to dying, what have I lost? What have I lost? I've lost nothing. Nothing. But what have you lost? Everything. Everything. That's why the Lord Jesus said, what shall a profit a man if he would gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Or what shall a man give in exchange to his soul? Now, I have been invited to go to Australia, but it's too far away. Sorry, New Zealand too. I've told them, too far away. Thanks. I tell people like, um, when it comes to the Holy Land and that, when there's the tours going over there, I want to see it when it's a lot safer and a lot cheaper. And that'll be the millennium. Okay? It's not that I'm so cheap, but, you know, I, I, I'm just quite happy. Just quite happy to be here. But if I went to Australia, I'd like to go at New Year's time. Because at New Year's time, in Sydney, Australia, on that great bridge, they have a sign that lights up. You know what it says? Eternity. Eternity. Because in that country lived a man by the name of Arthur Stace. Arthur Stace was a saved, saved man. And Arthur Stace was a man of any man did that understood just something, maybe just a twinge of it, if you like, of eternity. He was a beautiful writer. He had a real script to his writing. He spent most of his time going up and down the streets of Sydney, Australia, and he'd kneel down. People would go around them, and they wouldn't even walk over it. And he'd write on those concrete pieces, eternity, eternity. And people walk up. Very people ever walked over or tried to kick it off. You could write whatever you like. You go to California. I remember being out there years ago, and what was years ago, on our honeymoon, and seeing the names of the movie stars not all etched in the sidewalk. So what? So what? You know what I like better? Going over to Oxford, England, and seeing the name of those dear men that gave the martyrs that gave their life for the... You stood back, you wanted to salute that grave. Wanted to salute that marker. But people would walk around, Mr. Stace, beautiful handwriting, eternity, eternity. You know what that did? That caused, even in a godless country, I don't know if it's any more godless than ours is, that caused people to think about eternity. The whole purpose of this meeting tonight is to get you to think about eternity. To realize, look around, 
the house you're in right now, the parents that you have, not going to always have them. The children that you have, you don't always have them. The employment that you have, you don't always have that. You're going to eternity. And I have to tell you, you've never been so close. If you were with us last night or last week, you were closer to eternity. And so am I than I was then. I was in uh, Palm Springs, California, at a series of meetings there. And I did find it interesting that if you walked outside the gospel hall, there's a big mountain there. And they told me that's where a jet crashed into that mountain with Frank Sinatra's mother on it. And all that were in that jet were killed. It was just something, it was a really high mountain. I can see it yet. But you know, when I think about Sinatra, and I, I wasn't into his music or his entertainment, but it's interesting. Two things stick in my mind when I think of Frank Sinatra. A movie, one of the few movies that he acted in, and a song that he had actually written and sang himself. The song was, the record shows, I took the blows and I did it my way. And the movie was called The Streetcar of Desire. And underneath it, it said, from here to eternity. That was a movie. Do you realize he's there tonight? He's there tonight. Whatever rails his life ran on, he is in eternity. You know, Mr. Stace is in eternity. Doesn't matter, friend. Rich or poor, all have got God to meet and all have got eternity to face. And so let me bring it back to what we're talking about tonight. This is the prophet. This is the gospel preacher of the Old Testament, Isaiah. That one that tells us, oh, we like sheep have gone astray, turned everyone to his own way. The Lord hath laid on him the iniquity of us all. If eternity wasn't isn't what it's declared to be in the Bible, the Lord Jesus would never have left heaven. If it wasn't something for he, forever, he looked after it up there. But he came down here, gave his life, that he could give you life, eternal life, that will fit you for the great eternity. Wouldn't you like to have that tonight? Let me speak to older people, maybe my own contemporaries, not saved. Should have been saved years ago. You know it. Nobody knows it better than you. Maybe I'm speaking to some tonight and life has been just a waste. Just a waste. And now all that's facing you is the end of the road. And very little health to face it with. And you're going into eternity. If you're saved, thank God. Thank God. I know a lot of people that have missed it in this life. They have. They didn't have much in this life. But they had what was needed for the next life. And that was eternal life. That was salvation. Think of, I think it was mentioned, was it the other night? Yes. Um, I think it was on Sunday night that, uh, excuse me, on Wednesday night. It was, that she had mentioned uh, Doug McLeod that used to be the assembly here in Sussex. Dear man, really had nothing in this life. Nothing. Um, Christians bought him pajamas. Very seriously. And uh, other things. He's always very grateful of it. But do you know what he had? He had a savior. He was saved. He was a happy man. You know, anybody that knew him knew that. The people that he worked for, the farm that he worked on, the man that owned that farm told me, he says, I will come and listen to Doug McLeod anytime. He's a man of truth. He's a man of his word. But you know that more than that? He was a man of God. He used to tell a time when as a young boy he was saved, trusted Christ as his savior, started for heaven. And you know where Doug is tonight? I say this is in the graves, graveyard out there by the Belle Isle. No, no, that's where his remains are. He's in eternity tonight, but he's in heaven. Remember, friend, etern that question you will see, eternity where is so real? Because every single soul will be in heaven or in hell for all eternity. That's what makes any gospel meeting so solemn. More than that, that's what makes life and living solemn is because you are literally, if you like, in the dressing room for eternity. When you come out, it's no gain. It's the great beyond. And the question that should sink into your heart tonight is this. Where would I be if I died right now? No one ever gets saved. No one ever started for heaven that didn't face the solemn fact that, yes, that's absolutely true, that if I died, I'd be in hell. 
okay? May not have been going through your mind just at the moment that you were saved. It wasn't really with mine. I was telling somebody in an email today, all was going through my mind was Luke 19 and 10, my favorite verse. The Son of Man has come to seek and to save that which is lost. And the moment that I put faith in the one that said those words, the Lord Jesus Christ, I was saved. Not only for time, but for all eternity. You know, I think of it, we sing it in a hymn, eternity times sumulan. It's fleeting moments pass away. And say, oh, say, my sinner friend, where will you spend eternity? Let that question sink into your heart, my friend, tonight, as if I was speaking to you just personally, just the two of us. Where will I be in eternity? Thus saith the high and lofty one that inhabiteth, I love that, that dwelleth permanently in eternity. And his question is tonight, that he's made preparations for you. And your question is tonight, where will I be in eternity? Shall we pray? Father, we thank thee for the gospel. We thank thee there is a good news mixed with heavy news tonight. And we know that we have to tell people the balance of the truth of the two destinies for all eternity. People are fixed to their choice. Job, who spoke about just temporarily inhabiting houses and life, is the same writer that tells us much about meeting God. It'll take Solomon, the wise man, King Solomon with the lavishness of his house and his home. And he said, all men will go to their long home. That's eternity. Bless thy word, we pray tonight as we thank thee for the Savior's name. Amen. Thank you again for listening. And in the will of God, look forward to seeing you tomorrow night. Same time.